Hey everyone, it's Lockhart QT and I'm back again with a brand new Mass Effect video and today as it's a Halloween special I'm going to do a part two to the video that I did the other day talking about the essentially five scary things in the entire Mass Effect series and today I'm going to cover five more so if you guys haven't checked that one out I'd suggest checking that out first and without further ado let's get right into it. So obviously these are going to be five things that I didn't talk about in the other video and starting off with Mass Effect 3's Banshees. These are terrifying, especially in the monastery mission on uh, essentially where you go to uh, the monastery where they have the Adayakshi and this mission in general is one of the scariest missions in Mass Effect, not only from a gameplay standpoint but from a story standpoint as well because the gameplay of the Banshees are brilliant. The Banshees are a slow enemy, slow moving, but they not only have tons of health, but they can deal out tons of damage and if you're playing on the higher difficulties can essentially one hit you and not only that, but you, you'll hear that iconic Banshee scream coming in and then you'll panic. You actually panic. You think, oh my god, what do I do now? I have to switch to warp ammo, I have to get... Um, Liara out, whatever, but these things are terrifying, and from a story standpoint, they are effectively Asari, uh, especially Adat Yakshi that you find out in the monastery, that have been transformed by the Reapers and the Collectors into Banshees, and you know, that has loads of lore implications, as well as fun little fact, if you have in Mass Effect 3, if you have saved data from Mass Effect 2 where you had Morinth in your crew, she will actually appear as a Banshee in the Monastery mission, which is kind of cool and this mission in general not only is quite hard on the higher difficulties, but the Banshees are just genuinely terrifying. Next up are the Rachni. You meet the Rachni in all three of the original trilogy games and they are essentially an ancient species that are a bit misunderstood but again it depends on sort of what you do in the story and what choices you make but the Rachni turn Mass Effect 1 into sort of a sci-fi game into a horror game that and obviously the husks which I talked about in part 1 the Rachni you fight them they're difficult to fight they're creepy crawlies essentially which are some people's biggest fear and they are a bit creepy in some of the things they can do in terms of indoctrination obviously the fact that they talk about everything is like the great song and the great music and the great tunes it's really weird how they sort of talk and obviously you meet the queen again if you keep her alive you then meet her again in mass effect 3 where you then effectively have to try and take take her out or you don't again it depends on your choices but the Rachni are quite scary and they add another horror element to the Mass Effect trilogy. Next up is Mass Effect 2's Overlord DLC. This DLC is fantastic and it's one of my favourites. Essentially what you do, you and the Normandy crew are tasked with going to Project Overlord which is essentially they take a man named David and they tra they basically turn him into an AI and David as the AI is broken free and takes over the facility and you need to shut down David, get in there, get in there and sort him out. So on a personal level right now, not many people know this, in my family I have somebody who is heavily autistic and actually acts and speaks and has speech patterns and things that are very similar to David. So this mission from a standpoint hit very close to home and seeing something that hits something, you know, something that's very personal to me in a horror setting is a bit more scary psychologically. And I think that's something that this DLC does really well. Not only do you have the things that the it, David is always watching you, David has the monitors on and you can actually see like, eyes on the monitor that follow you around as you're walking and the fact that you can get a special ending if you fail the final boss where David essentially goes out into the world and takes over the entire Milky Way galaxy which is a terrifying thought and again you have all of the moral implications that go into this mission where do you keep David alive, do you kill David, what do you do with the people who are running Project Overlord, this this 
DLC is more psychological horror than physical horror and I, that's something that I really like. Again, this next one depends on your definition of scary, but for me, something that I'm scared about the most is the fear of death. And I wanted to talk today about all the different endings in Mass Effect, especially the refusal ending. In this ending, Shepard effectively refuses to do anything, thus meaning that the cycle continues, the Reapers are successful in their extinction of all life, or so they fought. And in this special ending, which is sort of a non-canon ending, which is a bit weird, Shepard refuses to do anything with, you know, control, synthesis, or destroying the Reapers, and just refuses to do anything, and the Catalyst is like, cool, okay, we'll just continue the cycle then. And it's just the, the thought of all of the characters that you meet in Mass Effect 3 and all life as you know it ending, and that existential dread is terrifying, it's something that we all think about, again psychological horror playing into this. And you also get a special sort of ending message, ending cutscene where it's somebody watching a video message of Liara basically saying that they failed and the Reapers won and it's now up to you to carry on their fight with the Catalyst. And lastly, again something that's very personal to your playthrough, the Collectors kidnapping and killing some of the Normandy crew. Now this bit of Mass Effect 2 is really cool and it's something that some of you may not even know is a thing. Once you get to a certain point in Mass Effect 2, a timer will start and you have a brilliant mission where effectively the Collectors storm into the Normandy collect or I think that's a bit too on the nose there but they kidnap pretty much the entire crew other than Joker and Edie and then it's then up to you and your crew to go on the suicide mission and rescue them and for me this is really cool because like I said a time just before this mission starts a timer starts in game I on my first playthrough I actually lost crew members because of this because I didn't even know this was a thing so this timer will start in the background and the more that you do, the more time that you take in between missions and doing side quests and visiting planets, essentially members of the Normandy crew who have been kidnapped by the collectors are picked off one by one. And when you actually get to the Reaper base and so the collector base and you save the Normandy crew, if you effectively fail this in some way where you can have Again, it's hard to explain, but if you take your time with this and let some of the die, you'll actually get characters reacting to this, basically saying, why didn't you come sooner? And I think that's something really cool. And obviously you get a slightly different version of this cutscene if you go straight away, or if you basically 100% the game and then do this mission to the point where the timer doesn't really start. Meaning that you've done everything in the game, you know, you've done all the side quests, you've got Legion and everything, and then you go to the base and save the entire crew with no deaths. And again, this is something that I've talked about on the channel before, I think the suicide mission is a brilliantly designed mission. But it's scary because it's on a personal level. You've grown with the Normandy crew and then suddenly you actually play as Joker inside of the Normandy whilst the collectors are killing off your crewmates in front of you and trying to find Joker as well as picking people and kidnapping them without... You know, you know, it's just that horror element of it because I not only think that it's a scary mission, but it's a really well designed one story wise. So anyway guys, those have been five scary or creepy or whatever things in the Mass Effect series and again this has been more of a Halloween special, this is a part two. If you guys haven't checked out part one, I really suggest checking out part one before you watch this. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching the video today and for more Mass Effect content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!